Hello everyone, this is a review on Cubase Pro 9. So I'm going to be demonstrating some of the new features and then I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on the new update. So let's start with the new window layout, which they're calling zoning. So when you go on the top right of the project window, you'll see these three buttons. This left one toggles on and off this inspector, visibility, track, and editor section. Uh, the right one toggles on and off the VST instrument rack and media bay. And then there's this new bottom one which toggle, toggles the uh, mix console, editor, sample control area, and chords pad section. Now, this is super handy, especially if you have a laptop when you only have w or when you only have one screen um, and you're trying to sort of control a bunch of things all in one time. So if you're trying to edit things, you can double click or click and it'll bring up the editor section. And what's handy too is when you're in the editor section, this actually switches to the editor mode. When you go back to the channels, this switches to the track. So that's pretty handy. Um, and I'll just talk about this a little bit more. So here you can adjust the size pretty much like to any size you need. Um, and it also has some uh, top menu things here like the cue link, suspend, and absolute mode, all these things. Um, you can toggle that menu on and off with that button. Then you can switch between the faders, the inserts, and the sends and that's super handy um, and then when you go here there's this button that pops up the main uh, mixer window um, and you can configure this kind of how you like so I like to keep it like this and quite small if I need a, a large mixing sort of thing going on then I'll just bring up my mixer window um, now to explain this editor section a little bit more is you can have this to scroll with the project by linking it or you can unlink it um, you can record within this window section you can solo it so whenever you're playing things oops, you can just solo what's in the editor um, you can do all kinds of different things here you have the snapped grid which is separate from the main project one and you have a quantize which is actually synced to it. I don't know if you can switch that or not. Um, and again you can pop up the editor with that little button there. You can bring it back down by pushing that button there um, and you can likewise configure this section the way that you that you like it. And you have a little edit VST instrument button right here as well which is pretty handy. What's more is that in this editor window you can go to the left side here and you can add different lanes. So right now this velocity lane is there. I can also add another lane and choose let's say uh, pitch bend if I had pitch bend going on and then I can draw within this editor section right here um, and then when I resize this window it'll adjust according to how much space there is um, and when I bring it back to size it'll put those uh, those lanes back into place and you can adjust those sizes as well and likewise it'll just kind of resize and keep in memory the size that you've you've assigned it so that's pretty handy and then to undo any of these things you can just Go ahead and delete and then if you want to remove a track you click on that little arrow button and then go remove this lane and then you're kind of back to normal. So I definitely appreciate this new window layout and it helps a lot with speeding up the editing process. I remember having to go into this window every time I wanted to just edit something and it was quite annoying actually. Um, Obviously it's doable, but when it's built into the main window system, it's a lot easier and just more straightforward. So I'll, I'll even demonstrate with something that I usually do, 
um, with lining up vocals is I'll have the project open and I'll have already quantized the drums which I don't need this section for so all I do is I take the drums whatever I'm quantizing and then I'll chop it up with this device here I'll uh, make sure that this is on group editing and then I'll chop it up and quantize it and all this is hunky-dory um, but then with things like bass lines um, and, or bass instruments and vocals things that have like single recording tracks what I can do is I can go into the editor window and then I can go into the free warp mode and wherever there's transient information or wherever, wherever the, the vocal starts and all that kind of stuff I can click the uh, the free warp let's go over here I can click the free warp and then I can go ahead and move it and this actually aligns it really really well um, it's easier and better and more um, it's more efficient for one but it sounds a little bit better because you're not chopping the audio files and moving and then crossfading and stuff all it's doing is it's stretching the audio ever so slightly um, with almost no noticeable difference to the pitch or to the sound quality in general unless you're like warping really heavy duty then you'll hear the pitch difference but usually the timing issues are so slight that ha moving uh, to let's say this one point um, 112 or something or 118 it's not gonna make, make that much difference but moving it and timing it with this warp function um, works pretty awesome and because of this new window layout it's just a lot more streamlined I can go work through the project and if there's specific files I can go here and then hit hit, hit the uh, the free warp and move it to however I need to and then quickly move up to another section free warp zoom here and this matches the zoom here so just overall a lot more streamlined and something that um, Cubase actually really needed to do um, certain programs like Ableton Live, Bitwig, they have already discovered that this is a really handy way to produce and to edit is to have all these windows in this neat um, project management system so uh, yeah it's about time that <laughs> Cubase got its window management now let's look at the sampler tracks so we'll go ahead and create one here and what's awesome is that you can drag and drop any audio source from your project into this little um, sampler control area or you can go into media bay and find something from your media bay and drag and drop from there um, let's close that I'll take this again and then you can quickly edit the start and end section for your sample um, you can quickly edit the pitch it's already mapped to this keyboard and when you activate the, uh, the record here you can use your keyboard and what you can do is quickly edit the audio warp so if you go to solo mode you have access to this format which is pretty dope um, you can sync to tempo I'm not exactly sure how to use that yet um, but you also have speed and f stuff like this to really stretch the audio um, you can also add filters drive rezzo you have um, filter types tube classic etc and you have filter shapes which is awesome the amplitude area here panner 
Um, you also have access to envelopes for the amp amplitude. Start uh, the ADSR, I believe. Maybe there is no D. ASR for sure. Um, in the filter, you also have an envelope right here. And for the pitch as well. So now what else is cool about this is that you have quick access to the reverse. So you can quickly reverse samples. You can have it on monophonic mode, which prevents multiple uh, instances. You can extract this into a new instrument. So you can put it into Groove Agent or Halion directly. Um, fixed pitch means that you won't have any pitch difference when you're clicking all these um, keyboard areas. Um, then you have this no loop, continuous loop, and you could set where the loop starts and ends. So it'll always start at the start. And once it, once it reaches this area, it'll start looping and it'll loop back to the, the loop start position. Which is pretty cool. Um, you also have an alternate. Which will bounce back between that loop area. Um, you have a once kind of loop section. All these different things here, which is super dope. And for myself, I'm not even used to using this kind of production tool. Um, so I don't even really know where to begin. Um, but having it built in right into Cubase, where you have this sample track, and you just drag and drop things into it, and then start producing, um, which is to me is like super dope. Let's go here and solo this and record something. And when you record, where is it recording? There it is. Um, it's only recording MIDI data, um, which is totally fine for me. But then eventually you could just go here and render in place afterwards and get audio. Um, but super duper handy. There's also two new added libraries which you can access through Media Bay. So if you go to Loops and Samples, you have the Kaleidoscope and Production Grooves. These are new. So now let's look at a much needed feature, which is the new Mixer History. Now this is something that I wish I would have had a long time ago. Because <laughs> I've had many instances where I've accidentally moved a fader by scrolling or something and then I can't go back um, and it was really annoying. Um, this here on the left hand side there's these tabs there's a history tab which you can open up with this button there and this thing records pretty much all the changes you could think of in this window. It records when you add plugins, it records when you remove plugins so let's, uh, when you move them as well as removing them, you can see in the history, um, it records send data. You can undo by clicking. You can also undo by dragging. Um, it records the fader, the pan, all these different things, which is, to me, is freaking better than I could have uh, imagined. I didn't know for sure whether they could actually um, implement the third party plugin and many of the videos that I watched did not explain that whatsoever. They didn't say that when you make changes like look here it I made changes to the threshold um, within the plugin you have the undos and stuff but many of the plugins like let's say um, a native instruments one these don't have undo, but when I make any changes, it registers in here. It tells me the details, so what's changed, by how much, and then what time has been changed. Um, and I find myself that I've, I've used all of that information 
to help clarify when I made certain changes to the mix and going back to um, a point where I know I didn't like you know go too far down a, a, a rabbit hole that started sounding making the mix sound really bad or something so this is a super handy feature I'm using this all the time now and Q, uh, Steinberg has implemented it in a way that I would have never thought was possible now let's look at the new plugins so for one there's a new EQ which is called frequency which is dope there's a new maximizer algorithm um, a new I think brick wall limiter algorithm as well as a new auto panner and a lot of the other plugins got a new uh, GUI or visual kind of makeover so when you go into Steinberg plugins this is the new EQ plugin, which is super handy. Um, it reminds me of the Pro Filter, or sorry, Fab Filter Pro Q. Um, it's a little bit different, but it has some of the same features. Uh, for one thing, you have eight bands, which is awesome. The other thing is that you can have it in uh, the stereo mode, or you can have mid side processing. So you can process the mid and the side separately for all these different bands. Um, the other thing is you have a wide uh, wide variety of different uh, types. You can have the cut from 6 to 96, low shelf, high shelf, peak, notch, all those kinds of things. Um, and then you have this little keyboard area which tells you the frequency for the actual uh, keyboard note. So let's say down here a B2 it's 246.9 hertz and what you can do is you can take this here you could see the the band is kind of highlighted on the keyboard section you can drag it to a note and then it's perfectly in line with whatever frequency a, a given note or pitch is um, also super handy the other thing is you have this uh, auto listen section so let's listen to a little piece when you're adjusting you can monitor just the band that you're selecting and when you hit control it kind of snaps to grid almost you can take that off if you want the other thing is you can have um, a bar graph Two channels there's a wide variety of things you can have a certain slope so you can see when I change the slope it's changing how the frequencies are represented that can be pretty handy for mixing situations or mastering um, overall just a great plugin and the this sort of visual feel is pretty much all represented with Steinberg's new plugins which um, and old plugins so let's go to the dynamics the compressor this got a, a much needed facelift um, it's a little bit easier to use as well the way that it's set up now there's also um, in the dynamics there's the expander which looks exactly the same but has the different expander features so now let's look at the new maximizer which will be in dynamics so this thing is basically the same as the old one when you're in the classic mode which has the, uh, the optimize the soft clip mix and output but now there's this new modern section which allows you to sort of fine tweak how the maximizer sounds now let's see let's not blow this too loud when you crank it up you can see it start to work You can see that the release and recover sections 
are really, really handy for getting that fine tuning in, in whatever loudness you're trying to go for. So when I have the release at super low, you can hear it's very squashed and sort of washing away. And when I have it at a longer release, and a lower recover, it's, it starts to take back and put in those dynamics again. Um, and you can fine tune it the way you like. So this section here, this new section, just two knobs, but with those two knobs, you have a lot more ability to um, sculpt the sound that you're actually going for. Um, the brick wall limiter also looks a little bit different. And I think these two buttons here have been added. Um, some of the other plugins though, like the tremolo and the vibrato, these have not changed. There's also a auto panner, which allows you to draw in like an auto tune sort of pattern. And this is actually really dope. Let's go ahead and get rid of these. You can draw it in, you can kind of automate it, but you also have random modes. So this generates a random drawing and this one random, randomly generates every cycle, which is awesome. Um, this is something I've thought about trying to emulate in some way, but I didn't think it was possible. And here we have uh, Cubase implementing it. And here you can adjust the smoothness of the curve and the width of the sound. And then here's your frequency rate. You can sync it to the beat. You have the factor, which will it'll elongate it. So we have one to one, but this is actually six bars long. If you go to quarter and four, this is the same as having one bar long. I definitely like these new plugins. Um, I've been using the expander a lot for drum recordings. Um, and instead of gating a drum kit, I like to expand the drum kit so that it's not hard cut off in different sections. And this expander I've had really, really good results with. I've, I have been using uh, Native Instruments, what is it, uh, Solid Dynamics for a while, but I find that one has very choppy, very uh, unpredictable results. Um, and with this thing, it has quite smooth overall good control. This auto panner I'm going to be using quite a bit um, for all of my auto panning. And this just helps to add some sort of width and randomness and interest to your songs. The rest of the plugins I think I'm pretty happy with as well. There's now the ability to send audio into VST plugins and you can use the filters and effects and whatnot from that instrument. So let's demonstrate a little bit with the Retrolog. You open it up and now there's this activate sidechain button. Now you can send any audio signal to a VST instrument that supports the sidechain. And then you can put the level up, use the filter cutoff, use the effects and all this jazz. There's now also multiple marker tracks, which can be really handy for certain situations. For myself, I only use one because I pretty much only ever use it to mark certain editing features or different sections of the song. But let's say you have a really big project with like all kinds of synths um, and stringed instruments, percussion, all these different things. What you can do is add another marker track, let's say for drums only. So this is what I'm going to use for editing my drums and I'll name this um, Realign Kicks. 
and you can kind of quickly quickly um, get things organized by having multiple uh, tracks so that they're not always visible because for me I leave a marker track on the top mostly just to see different sections but also for the quick access with my uh, with my controller here and I don't need tons of information up there all I want and all I need is basically the main stuff up here to control with but sometimes you want to have a lot more information let's say um, that works here but I also want um, to realign the loops so I can go here and say fix loops down here like this is pretty flexible you can go down and add some more however you like um, and then another feature that they've added is when you export audio you have the ability to export cycle markers in batches so let's say I'm doing a mastering job and I have multiple songs in the in the track so what I would do is I would import all the individual tracks on their separate track their separate audio track then I would fade them between each other in some way I would uh, master the, each individual track the way that it needs maybe one needs more top end than the other so that's why I would keep them in their individual track process them individually um, and then blend them together so that it has like a nice continual flow in the album but then when I go to export each individual song what I would do is I would set up these loop markers to wherever I'm doing that um, but then when I go to export the song traditionally what I would have to do is export here then I'd have to cancel and I'd have to go to the next uh, loop marker double click on that to change this locator section then I'd go back all the way to export go back in here do all this stuff here but now what you can do is just export the cycle markers and choose which one you want and it'll export in batches too and then once you export it'll say something a little bit extra it'll I think it'll export the content ID as well so it'll say this here sustain dash preview dash one um, so that's super handy especially for the mastering example like I demonstrated one more thing that they changed is the cloud collaboration with VST connect is you no longer have to have like a separate login thing it's actually you log in with your uh, my Steinberg account so that's what I'm doing here you log in and then you create just a username let's see if there is no nope. so no capitals allowed <laughs> or spaces Studio. you can have underscore hmm anyways let's go ahead and complete so once you're in on this left section you can enter your information in your profile there's the project area which you you basically establish what's going to be uploaded and what people have access to and then you have your friends list as well so this thing is pretty cool I think I'm gonna try and experiment with this one day um, and then lastly there's one more notable change they made is that Cubase no longer supports 32-bit plugins so in your plugins manager you'll see this tab blacklist these are my 32-bit plugins that are no longer supported and then it also puts plugins in here that it thinks um, aren't working properly so you can see this one's a 64 but, but for some reason it has quarantined it here in this blacklist area so you can reactivate them um, if something happens but yeah so that's the general overview so that is my overview and opinions of the Cubase Pro 9 update I'd say that the implementations that they've done with the history and the sampler track those are probably the biggest ones 
that made me want to buy the upgrade. And <laughs> before this, when I had 8.5, when I bought that update, I think from 8, sorry, from 7.5 to 8, when I upgraded, I had some bugs, some issues that later got fixed. And when I upgraded from 8 to 8.5, I also got bugs that and issues that later got fixed as well. Um, so at that point, I told myself that I'm just not going to upgrade, even if there was some new features or whatever implemented. I'd said, this is it. That's all I'm going to do. And then they came with they came up with the uh, the mixer history, which was a big one. Then they came up with the sampler track, which was freaking also super dope. Um, and then the new plugins as well, like and the the window layout too. Like <laughs> even me just kind of going and summarizing this, I'm thinking of how awesome it is. Um, and for the I think I only paid what. Uh, $99 US or Canadian I can't remember um, but for that sort of that cheap of a price and to have those extra features it was worth it even if there was going to be bugs so here I am um, half a year later uh, putting my foot in my mouth because I said I would not upgrade regardless of what happened um, but I'm not looking back because these features are actually pretty dope and like I said before, it's it's speeding up my workflow. It's um, giving me more creative options, and then just overall better quality um, DAW features. So that is all I have to say. If you are looking to upgrade to Cubase Pro 9, then hopefully this helped. I know when I saw just the features alone, that made me bite the bullet and give them my money um, if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below if you like this leave a like and, and if you like these kinds of videos then consider subscribing to my channel uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video